Welcome to Coding Problems Part 1. This video series is going to deal with some important problems that are covered in popular and renowned websites like LeetCode and HackerRank and all those websites as well as asked during coding interviews. So we're going to start out very simple and we're going to work our way to more complex and difficult problems. So the first video will deal with very simple problems and I could do in either C++ or Python or any other language of my choice. So the basic purpose here is to learn, understand how the problem could be solved. There could be so many ways to solve a problem and I will just show you my personal way what I would do. If you have a better solution to that, then feel free to comment in the comment sections and show your solutions to the specific problem. So the first problem we're going to be doing is actually reversing a string, which is basically uh, a data type in C++ and we're going to reverse it and show its reverse form in the console screen. That's pretty much what we're going to do. So let's just go and include our IO stream header file and I'm going to uh, use my main function here and notice that I didn't include a namespace this time. All right, so I didn't uh, include namespace this time and now I'm just going to go with my string. So I'm going to get a string and I'm going to call it str and I'm going to give some kind of value. Let's say hello. Now, let me just have this uh, string uh, defined. So let me just have it hash include string. And now let's go here and reverse the string. So we're going to use a for loop, very traditional, str.length. And let's have that as minus one. Let's go uh, and we'll say greater than or equal to the zero. So that and we're just going to keep on decrementing by minus one. And we're going to keep on showing the thing. So console output, standard. So console output, and let's just show the string. So str subscript, and we put the value of the i. -th. So, and this is how it's gonna be shown. So let's just run the code and see if it's all working well. All right, so let's go and G++, and I think it's main. So, okay, so we got some issues here. We got a string was not declared in the scope, str dot length. All right, so let's see what's, what's, what's the issue here. We have a string str, str.length minus one. Why is this issue coming? So let me just have that str1 over here. Let's see if that deals with the issue. And now let's run the code. Okay, we still get an issue here and now run. Okay, we got a string was not declared in the scope. String str1 equal to hello. Suggested alternatives and file included um, string. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Actually, we need to do standard string as well. So sorry about that. <laughs> okay, now let's just run the code. CLS, and there you go. Compiled, and there you go. We have it reversed in O-L-L-E-H. Cool. Okay, so this was our first problem done. Our second problem is to sum up a two-dimensional array. And I'm going to be defining the array over here. So let's have an array. Let's say we have a three and then we have a two. Okay, so this is our two dimensional array and let's hard code the values. So if I multiply this three and two, how much is that? Six. So let's have some values, three, four, five, and six. All right, so we have six values here and this is going from zero all the way to five. And this is basically one dimension from here, and this is two dimension from here. And if we talk about this together, it's a 2D array. And uh, uh, this indicates the rows, so they're zero to two. And this indicates the columns, which are zero to one. And that's how it sums up. So we could just picture, picture that in our minds, and that's how it's uh, linearly represented in the memory. Zero, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now what our job here is to sum this up. Now, we want to sum this up. How can we do this? Now, my approach here we could do here is basically let's have a, a tracker for our sum. And we could just call that as in sum. We use a for loop for the outer case here. So we start it with i is equal to zero. And we could say i is less than three. So, and we could just keep on incrementing that. And from here, we could just go and say int j is equal to zero. And we could say j is less than the value, which is two. And then we could keep on incrementing that. And inside of this, so one over here, I just forgot that I think I erased a parentheses. So over here, what I need is actually the addition. So I could use a sum 
and I can use this plus and then minus. And then I could use this array and I could just put the i in this i place and j in the j place. Remember to use this pattern. Don't mix that up. And then once you're done with that, you could just spit out the sum over here, right here. So we could have sum and we could have that printed out. Before that, we would need a standard to define the C out because we're not using the namespace. All right. And in this case, we don't even need a string or anything. All right. So now let's run this baby up. Go back here and CLS. And now let's just compile it and run. We got an answer of 21. Let's verify our solution. Over here we have one plus two, which is three, three plus three, which is six, six plus four, which is 10, 10 plus five, which is 15, and 15 plus six, which is 21. Correct, our solution worked. And this is uh, the solution for even more than that. So we could just have um, more values, let's say seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, and now uh, yeah, I forgot. You need more things over here. You need space here. So you're going to have to double this up or triple this up to have that readjusted. So if I have like 4 uh, and 3, 4, 8, 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we have 11 and we have 12. And now let's run this coding now. So back here. Compile it. Run it. Got 27. Why did we get that? 4, 8, 12. Okay, so we got... Uh, we got to change this up as well um, and uh, now you could see that our answer would be correct there you go 78 so it looks fine to me if there's any bugs or any issues please note them down and in the comment sections I would be reading your comments so right now it looks fine to me because I have a 4 and 3 use a 4 here and a 3 here and then sum them up for a 12 and there's 12 elements here so doesn't look doesn't look anything wrong or anything obscure we're gonna have to calculate discount um, from some kind of values we have before so we have a price we have a, a double let's say we have a discount so suppose we want to calculate the discount of a given price and we have this the following variables that are defined for us so we have saving and we also have the double final now we have these four data types and let me explain all of these about first one is the price so for instance we have a product that is for ten dollars and this ten dollar product has a discount of let's say ten percent this is ten percent off for this discount product or that okay so there's a ten percent how much is the saving and what is my final cost? All of that I need to know. So let's just get things started by, let's have a fancy console output. Let's have that console output and let's say enter, enter the original price. So O-R-I-G-I-N-A-L-P-R-I-C-E. And we could just have that as standard and line. Over here I needed to put a standard as well. There you go. Now we got the standards and line, and we're gonna we need a standard C in over here to get our price for our product. And then once we're done with that, let's just copy this and let's ask for the, what's the discount. So uh, enter the discount. And now notice here we're not gonna ask for the percentage sign. We're just gonna say the thing without the percentage. So we just need that. And over here, just like that, instead of price, now we're gonna have it getting the discount, so D-I-S-C-O-N-T. And once the discount is given over here, we could just use our saving, which is over here. Okay, so let's have it saving. And let's have something in here. So let's say price. So, so the thing is, initially we have this discount and price and saving final. And now what I could do here is I know that the discount has to be divided by because if we want to calculate the savings there's a general formula that you have to divide this with 100 once you divide this discount with 100 what the result you get you have to multiply it with the original price so for instance this price came here and just put this bracket here for precedence so you can see that this is going to be solved first then what's the result will be multiplied with this and that will be assigned to saving so that's going to be the money that we saved now 
uh, the final price that we could get here is we're gonna have that original price, which is P-R-I-C-E. We're gonna subtract that with the saving. And that's what our final result will be. So let me just console output stuff over here. Um, first thing we're gonna say is discounted. Discounted price, so P-R-I-C-E. And we could have that as final. And don't forget this standard standard over here as well so the discounted price will be our final price and we can just have that uh, printed out as final okay so after that we could have our savings so how much we're saving so console output and we say your uh, saving and we can just basically have the saving in here so s a s a v i n g and the standards standard and line all of that and boom we're here with our savings now let's just verify that our answer is correct so suppose that we have a ten dollar ten percent discount should give us a one dollar saving which which results that if i get a one dollar saving my final will be nine dollars let's see so if i run this code here i have to clear everything and i'm gonna run the code on another time so just compile this okay we have an issue here um, there's a expected semicolon before final let's go and see where the semicolon is missing um, there you go there's a semicolon missing here before final and let's go back here and let's compile our code once again compiling and running okay original enter the original price suppose it's ten dollars and the discount that I'm getting is 10. So your discounted price is nine, you're saving $1, works like a charm. Over here, let's just have an addition here. So let me just make it a little more pretty to the eyes. Let me just have this uh, dollar sign here. So a dollar sign here and over here as well. So um, right after this, I could just have a dollar sign right there. Now let's just run this once more with another value. So on this uh, compile it run it so original price let's say hundred dollars we have a discount of 20 and your discounted price is twenty dollars eighty dollars you're saving twenty dollars that was it with this video i had solved three problems if you have any questions related to this problems or you have better solutions please let me know in the comment sections and i will see you guys in the very next one peace out